Hi, welcome to my review show. Today's guest is the Type 81 M. M is the designation for the new variant to the Type 81 family. Now, why do I say variant? It's because that's what they are. They're not military surplus. All the receivers are newly manufactured to the uh, semi-auto standard. And that is the reason why, legally, they are known as Type 81 SA. SA stands for semi-auto. Uh, matter of fact, all the previous shipment, including this, are all Type 81 SA, except for one, and that is the SR, which is the Dragunov stock. Uh, I, I'm guessing that uh, the receiver had significant changes to warrant a separate ID at the FRT. In any case, since it's so lopsided, on one hand I only got the SR and all the rest are SA, I'm gonna, for my purposes, for my video, I'm gonna break it down to three variants. Variant number one, number two, number three, and they're gonna be based on not just the receiver, but also on the barrel. And uh, variant number one will be, uh, and will be in accordance to their arrival. Okay, so before I do the review on the variant number three, let me give you a brief um, talk about variant number one and two, and I'll be back. I am back. This is the first variant. It has 18 and a half inch light barrel. It has two receivers. This is the fix. This is the side folder. They are not interchangeable. Now, if you're new to Type 81, you're going to say, well, that barrel doesn't look light to me. You're right, because you're looking at the grenade launcher sleeve. But the barrel is light. If you measure here, it's 16 millimeter. And if you remove this grenade launcher, and I have, it's 14.44 millimeter. Now, if you were to uh, Google Type 81 rifles, you'll see lots of pictures. They are around the world. They are in Africa. They even serve on the United Nations. They're in South Asia. Sri Lanka uses them. They even license uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, that model is called BD-08. And of course, they're also in Southeast Asia. The rebels in Miramar use them, and that's where the most interesting variant come from is in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, however, uh, there's some fun facts. If you were to see, like this is three, but if you were to see two ribs instead of three, you know that's military. The PLA uses two. They would have darker wood, and it would be a side folder and not a fix. And that's what majority of the military uh, around the world would be using them. Um, now, if you see three, you know that's strictly Canadian. And that is because of our, uh, of our laws that requires to be 18 and a half inch minimum if you're going to be non-restricted. <clears throat> and so, therefore, our grenade launcher and our barrel is an inch longer than the original. And in the wisdom of the factory, they decided to put <clears throat> three ribs instead of two, which is a r good decision, because they thought if they just left it at two with an inch longer uh, sleeve, it would look kind of weird, and that's correct. Now, if you would see no ribs, that would be American, okay? They had like no more than 20 Type 81 shipped to the States in the late 80s. Uh, by that time, they already banned uh, fixed grenade launcher, fixed bayonet. So, um, so theirs would be no ribs, including no retaining ring, okay? So that would be American. Okay, original, original shipment came in in January 2018, so the serial number would be 2017. Originally, the wood was blonde, got switched to red later, and that is the subvariant. It's called SE. Now, if you're a car guy, you think SE would be special edition. Well, no, there's nothing special about it. All they did is painted the wood to red. And they also, it's just cosmetic. And they also changed the uh, 
blueing to uh, parkerize, or park or phosphate. That's another word for it. And this SE or redwood was a really confusing. I did a review on that, and for the life of me, I can't remember uh, what is what. They they had this OR model, which stands for optic ready, but it wasn't really optic ready because they didn't have a side rail, and uh, so. If you had an optic ready, um, the selector was switched to the right, and then you would have protruding pins, threaded pins. People didn't like the uh, selector on the right since they couldn't get the rails, so they end up switching it back to the left, or they switched the pins, and some of them went so far as to cut the thread off. So it was a really uh, confusing time. It was like a dog's breakfast, and honestly, for the life of me, I can't remember what is what. Okay, and then to chop it all off, they kill the rail uh, after the first production. So it was a really confusing time, and I don't really want to talk any more about it. So let's go on to the next variant number two. These are the second variant. It has 20 and a half inch heavy barrel, two receivers. The first one is the LMG, also known as the clubfoot stock. The second one is the SR also known as the Dragonoff stock. They do have a sub-variant called the Limited. Uh, to a car guy it sounds like uh, LE, Limited Edition, um, meaning they made less of, uh, but there was nothing special about that because all they did was change the blowing to phosphate, uh, while everything else is the same. Okay, um, I have modified this to a DMR. I changed the stock, the grip, I removed the carrying handle, and I also removed the uh, cleaning rod and the bipod. This is what it originally looks like. Okay. Um, it arrived in September 2020. This one arrived in September 2022. Okay, I'm done with the second variant. Now let's move on to the third. These are the third variant. It has 18 and a half inch heavy barrel, two receivers. The first is the underfolder, the second one is the fix, and they are not interchangeable. A full disclosure, I consider myself to be a underfolder nut, which means I just love them. They look so cool. And, uh, and I don't care what other people says, I heard all the negatives in the last few decades about them, but I still love them. I, uh, I take them for, the, for what they are. Uh, they make the rifle look so cool and compact. They're not sniper rifles. How bad can it be? They must have made like 30 to 40 million of these underfolders around the world, and I don't hear those soldiers complaining about cheek weld. I love them so much that I even put it on my SKS, although I haven't bothered to uh, assemble this one. But here, I'll show you what a picture looks like when it's fully assembled. Looks pretty darn cool, doesn't it? I also even put one on my uh, VZ-58. Doesn't this look cool? Yes. So yeah, I just, just love underfolders. So let's uh, begin with a review. Uh, whenever I handle a new Type 81, the first thing I always do is check to see if it's bent. And how I do that is looking in the back of the top cover to the bottom of the front sight block, okay? And I'm checking this uh, fix, and it looks pretty darn straight. No problem there. Now I'm gonna check the underfolder, and again, the back of the top cover, straight down to the bottom of the front sight block, and it doesn't look straight. Now, just because it doesn't look straight, you can't trust your eyesight. You have to do the deviation test. Now, I'll link that to the description. Now, how much is this deviated? I don't know. I have to do the test, and I'll attach that. I'll, I'll explain it to you briefly at the end of the video, and I'll even show you the final results. Okay, uh, let's move along, and let's begin with the review. Okay, um, let's get rid of the stats first. AOL, 
38 inches. Under folder, 29 inches folded, 38 and a half extended. LOP 12, 13 and 3 quarters. Weight 7.88, 8.32. You're wondering how much this weighs more than the 18 and a half light, light barrel? It's about half a pound heavier. Okay, four and a half pound uh, trigger uh, weight, trigger pull, five pounds trigger pull. Okay, now we got rid of the, the specs on that. Now let's uh, start with the, uh, what would you get when you buy one of these? Well, you would get two 30 round mag pin to five. You would get a oil or solvent bottle. Uh, you would get a manual. I read the manual, there's nothing special in there. Uh, you would have a cleaning kit. I've seen this cleaning kit before and a brush, uh, they, they are on the LMG. There's, um, uh, there's two things in here that's worthwhile talking. I personally do not use uh, the cleaning rod because it's steel, I always use aluminum and brass, so I never use, use any of these. But uh, these two you might have to. I think that's pretty cool. The first one is a casing extractor, okay. Uh, split uh, casing extractor, that's a good one and also the wrench. This wrench, this part, you put into the back of the sight block and that's how you loosen it and that's how you drift it uh, left to right, okay? And the other end, this end, it's for your adjusting your gas regulator. You slip in there like that and then you move it to one or move it to two. All right. Now let's begin with the review and I'll start from the front and work my way to the back. The front, you're gonna see a thread protector. It, it protects 16 by one right hand thread for your uh, muzzle device. It's attached to a um, uh, front sight block that we've seen before uh, on the LMG except they lopped off the top of the round hood. Okay, I don't know if I like it yet because I haven't shot it, but uh, following that, bottom is a steel rod that I never use, and the cleaning rod, and the barrel here is 18 millimeter in diameter. Uh, you can see the finishing is phosphate, not bluing. The gas block has a 201, zero shuts off the gas, one is after you clean it, and two when the rifle is dirty and you want a more gas and you switch it to two. Now the front furrow, uh, you see this is squared off at the bottom. I've seen this before on the LMG. So the shape is like the LMG. Uh, something new this year, they have this uh, bulge on either side. They call them the, the finger, uh, the palm swell, although it doesn't actually touch the palm. It's more like a, it's more like a, like a finger grip uh, groove, large groove on either side. Uh, here's one, uh, this wood is uh, made out of beech and it has a nice orangey uh, finishing on it. I do, I do see a couple of problems here with my top hand guard. There's a one inch split in the front and another half inch right there, uh, wood split. So I don't know what's causing that because I don't see actually see any dents or damage. So uh, it could just be, uh, it's hardwood. It's made, it's made out of hardwood, so it might just, just be shrinkage and splitting. Okay, moving down to the front, uh, to the rear sight block. And um, something new this year, uh, there used to be a bar on top of the rear sight. Uh, they, they locked, they cut that off. And so now the rear sight looks more like a SAS, SKS. And the dialing is exactly like the uh, first variant. If you see a five facing towards you, turn the right dial forward to one. Okay, and the one is now facing you. Once you have the one facing you, grab the left dial and pull it out and turn about one third and then pull up on the top hand guard. And that's what it looks like. And this is, of course, your rod. And um, the left side is your, um, your serial number, and it begins with 2023. 
and uh, of course is a T81SA. Uh, this year the uh, carrier is painted black. Oh, also something new this year is the magazine catch is twice as large. It's, it's for those people with big fingers, although I didn't have any problems uh, uh, operating uh, the previous one. It was just fine. And um, the trigger, the trigger guard is the same. The grip is the same side, same size, and the selector is on the left side. F in the front, S in the right. And uh, once you get to this point, to the back, it's completely different than the underfolder. Okay. This one we've seen in the previous fixed stock before. Same shape, same size. Uh, again, it's a nice beach. Same orangey finishing. Uh, finishing is good, uh, no drips, and uh, the butt plate has a trap. Uh, obviously, this cleaning kit won't fit in there, but if you get an SKS cleaning kit, that'll work just fine. Okay, done with the fix. Now let's talk about the um, underfolder. I love underfolder, so I'm really tickled pink to have this. And uh, obviously I have a uh, Chinese underfolder from before. And the difference between this and this, uh, and this, this one, well, let me remove this. This one is half inch longer. And the reason why it's half inch longer, so it could clear the magazine without removing it. This one, I had to remove the magazine every time. So, because this is half inch shorter. However, the, um, the roundness of that part, this is bigger, that's smaller, even the button is uh, smaller, the button is bigger, uh, but the button, this one is taller, it sticks out about, about half inch from that, uh, that uh, round plate, this one only sticks out about a quarter uh, of an inch. Now, now some of you are probably going to wonder, well, does it wobble? Well, no, it's uh, side to side, there is no very little movement. Uh, however, up and down, it has about uh, three eighths to half an inch up and down movement. But that's normal, because this one also moves, it, but it moves less. Now, it really depends on how much wear it has, but also depends on how big the hole, the two prong. It's held in by two prong that goes in into a hole. And if the hole is too small, then it will have a hard time going to the hole, but there will be less wobble. And if the hole is bigger, then of course, easy to go in, uh, but there will be more wobble up and down. So yes, this button is a lot easier to operate than this one. Uh, there were times where I have to use a mallet on this button because it would just wouldn't go in. Uh, but here, this is how you do it. Press the button, move it down. Okay, at this point, move the straighten out the butt plate and then it clears the magazine and then it folds you here click and that's when it locks in place and then it doesn't drop okay now some of you might say that yours is um, lopsided it's uh, it's scraping against the wood stock it's touching the wood stock that's actually not a big deal okay uh, all you have to do is um, here it's very simple you have to put felt pads there and on the two hinges. That should do it. And if it's really scraping, you can also put electrical tape on the wood to protect the wood. But honestly, some people are suggesting uh, bending the folder. Uh, I would not do that because the receiver is uh, stamp sheet metal, uh, soft uh, metal, and you could uh, accidentally uh, bend the receiver out of shape and that'll cause a lot of fuel to feed and fuel to eject uh, because uh, it'll be pinching on your carrier so I would not do that I would just leave it leave it, it's normal uh, it's just just put more padding and tape uh, to protect the wood but that's about all you should be concerned about okay now the back of this there's a hole uh, in the uh, trunnion, the um, and you press this button and it removes. Some say it's for the cleaning rod. Well, maybe. Although I never use it, I have no issue. I have no issue 
sliding in my cleaning rod from the top so I, I would never put it down there. I'm checking the chamber looks just fine nice and shiny and uh, be careful when you slide your fingers on the edge uh, it might be uh, sharp like razor blade it isn't here uh, okay the ejector is very pointy and sharp right there but other than that um, this looks fine okay now some of you might be wondering if um, is this basically uh, going to stop at the uh, third uh, variant? Uh, personally, I don't think so. I, I see it's following the same path as the VZ58, which started as a non-restricted, and then pretty soon you have different variants from FSN, you have CZH, and then you had CSA, and then pretty soon we ended up with uh, restricted. Uh, so, uh, yeah, would we see uh, fourth uh, variant of restricted yes I think we'll we might see it in a few years uh, 16 and a half inch barrel and if we we're lucky we might even get a crank off uh, type 81 now I do have a compact this is a compact but is it's even shorter than a crank off but it's not considered a crank off and the difference between a compact and a crank off is where the front side block is located you see this front side block it's on top of the gas block and this is not okay this is not on top of the gas block so this is not considered a crank off it's just con considered as a uh, compact so yeah it would be nice to have a, a type 81 crank off and uh, well further down the road can we see a different caliber like 556 five, why not they, they didn't make them in, in the proprietary uh, ammo 5.8 by 42 which is uh, quite similar to uh, 556 they even made it in 308 called NAR 10 so that's down the road is that all possible yes I think there's uh, everything is a possibility so it's not gonna just stop at the third variant we're gonna, we're gonna we see a few years we're gonna see the fourth variant so uh, thank you very much for joining me please hit the like button and subscribe and stick around and I'll show you what the numbers uh, on the deviation of the folder to check the deviation of my folder, I had to get like uh, these steel magnets. You can get them from AliExpress. Make sure that they're silver uh, steel and not uh, the black one. The black one's just basically uh, magnetic powder. Uh, get about six of them, right? Minimum three in each. And the reason why you need this magnet is that you had to overcome some of the uh, rise, like um, you know the rings and. Uh, the stuff that's sticking out and you put before you put them on measure the thickness of both of them make sure they're same uh, same width use a caliper put them like this right one on each side and then put it against a straight edge okay now it can be a glass it could be a, a straight edge steel but I, I personally use a dining room table and I hold this up with the uh, uh, camera bipod and uh, that's it stays there no problem and then remove this uh, here and you want the furthest point on the barrel so put um, scotch tape the one that you can write on and do your best to center it okay put a mark on that as you can see I have a mark on there and I also have a mark over here I put a tape there and I put a mark over there okay so then put this magnet against the straight edge okay and then use a proper um, like a ruler in nice millimeter like this one right here right use that in millimeters and here I'll give you an example I have actually written it down um, so if you were to have this line is a straight edge okay this line is a straight edge and you have this receiver with three magnets on each side up against the straight edge and the barrel is pointing downwards and it's uh, canted it's it bends to the right and you measure the middle from from the edge to the middle in my case it was 22 millimeter 
and then from here the front part which is by the gas block no not by the gas by, by the sight block right here this is here and it measured 25 millimeter so is that it no it, it isn't because you may not be uh, centered so you have to turn this receiver around and measure from the other side from here okay. so oops so now you're measuring it from this side okay and this is a straight edge now and you have your three magnets and you're measuring it to the center and it turned out to be 22 so then you know that this line is dead on is centered right because both sides are 22 this is 22 and on this side is 22 so that's correct so you take what this measurement is and this has happened to be 19 right because it's bending to the right so have the numbers less so you take 22 minus 19 is 3 degrees to the right and this matches the 3 degrees to the right over here so you know your calculation uh, is correct okay now here I'll show you another example if I were to put both of these chart on one on one sheet this is what it'll look like okay and I'll, let's, I'll make the deviation even more so I'll even turn the barrel even more to the right and it's 22 to the center from this side 22 let's say that you happen to have two straight edge and six magnets on each side and this is the result and if you measure from there to there and from there to there both 22 that's correct and then from here to the middle is 26 and then from here to 18 okay and because this width is 44 millimeter this should be also 44 and as it turned out it is 44 26 plus 18 is 44 so so you know your center is also correct and now the deviation has changed right from 22 take away from 26 you have four degrees and on this side this is from here and this side is 22 minus 18 is 4 so now you know your deviation is now 4 now still 4 or more uh, the uh, the importer will take the uh, back uh, for uh, for replacement so to answer your question what is the deviation for this um, under folder that I have it's 3 degrees so yes it does not qualify for a replacement so I'm going to end up keeping this. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the um, with the handguard, uh, that split handguard, but I'll have to think about that. So thank you very much for joining me. Please hit the like and subscribe button.